Hi! As I mentioned at the end of last week's video, today we're going to be doing Shrek themed nails. But making it cute and aesthetic. Why Shrek, you may ask? Well, I mentioned it as a joke once, and then one of you guys was like, Could you do Shrek next? And I jokingly replied with, Heck yeah, I can! Fully knowing I was only half serious about it, but then somebody else backed him up, so I guess I really am doing Shrek nails now. <laughs> I've rewatched Shrek for like the third time this month. The first two were purely for entertainment, but the last one, the most recent one, was to study the art and to see what frames or scenes I could use from it. Shrek's swamp is actually so pretty if you're into cottagecore slash fairycore aesthetics. Like, look at this lighting and ambience. He's even got his own pond with lily pads, his own private washroom with hanging vines and crescent moon detailing, both of which I'm going to include in my nail art design, by the way. Okay, let's get started. Part 1, Materials and Prep Work I also picked up this nail art brush last week, or at least that's what the packaging says, but it has a slanted silicone tip so I don't know if you can call it a brush. I can't read Japanese, but they have this picture in the middle that shows a gradient. I don't imagine it working well, but I'm going to give it a try anyway, just because I was curious. Besides that, I'll also be using this silicone tray to mix colors in, a paper towel on the side, dotting tools, a small container for some isopropyl alcohol, a flat brush if the silicone one doesn't work, and a thin liner brush. I already removed the previous polish, which was this marble jade nail I did about a month ago. The video is linked in the comments for anyone who's interested. They grew out really nicely, no lifting or cracks anywhere. Yeah, so I filed that off, painted a base and top coat on my clear nails yesterday, and here we are today. Using the finest grit I had, I lightly roughed up the surface of the top coat and brushed off any loose powder. And then I re-sanded any areas that were still shiny. Now I'll collect any loose dust with a damp paper towel and also make sure my nails are clean with a bit of isopropyl alcohol. This is for the dust but also the sunscreen that we applied earlier. I usually just use a base coat but I found this primer while I was cleaning up but I wanted to try it out since I've never actually used it before. I think I got this mini Quo set from someone because I definitely didn't buy it. Mmm, is this supposed to be yellow? It smells a little bit like vinegar too, but oh well. It's very thin. I think it's just a dehydrator. Maybe I should have searched it up before using it. Anyways, it's already on. Now that our prep work is done, let's begin with the background color. Here I'm custom mixing a clear gel polish with some blue acrylic paint to get this jelly semi-transparent blue. I'm going to use this color for the gradient groundwork, and you'll see me applying it in multiple layers. I tried stippling the silicone brush like how I normally do for gradients, but it wasn't really working. So I switched over to my flat brush and it immediately started blending so much smoother. The first layer is going to be very light. I used a stippling motion to bring the color almost to the very top, then cure it in my nail lamp for 30 seconds. Next, I repeat the stippling motion, but I stop around or a little higher than the 3 4th point of my nail length. You may want to go lower or higher depending on how long your nail is and the amount of gradation you want to achieve. I'm going to cure that. I needed to mix some more clear and blue. The silicone brush isn't good for gradients, but it's really nice for mixing colors. Here I'm just making the ring, pinky, and thumbnail a little darker to match my index and middle finger, and then curing it for another 30 seconds. This is going to be the last layer I'm applying for the background color. Here I'm applying blue to the tips up to the halfway point this time. So I just went back and blended out the line when my brush was nearly dry and cured it for another 30 seconds. Apply a glossy top coat to smooth everything out and then cure it again for another 30 seconds. And we're done the background. So part 3 is going to be the decorations. I'll show you guys how I did my index finger then do the rest fast forwarded. With a fine dotting tool, I'm making an open C shape and leaving a wedge like Pac-Man's mouth and I'm going to repeat this randomly where I see fit. As I was working on this, I realized the green was way too dark, and there's not enough contrast between the lily pads in the background. So after I cured it, I mixed some white into the green to reapply over the existing lily pads. This green turned out a lot better and closer to what I had in mind. The little dots I'm adding are duckweed, and I'm going to cure this again. Now my next step is to add the flowers. I'll just be placing one over each lily pad that I previously painted. I tried two different techniques here. The first one, as you can see, is starting from the middle and working my way outwards for the petals. And then the second one is to dot the outer petals first and drag them towards the center. Both looked similar, but the second one was easier to map out, so that's how I did the rest of them. 
I let that cure, then mixed some pink to put in the center of the flowers, which I then spread outwards. After curing that, I mixed a pale yellow to dot in the center and then cured it again. And that's it for the lily pads. The last step to finish this up is to apply a thick top coat to seal everything in and smooth out some of the bumps. Yeah, so let's do the rest of my nails and then attempt the Shrek one. I decided to take inspiration from Shrek's outhouse and include the crescent moon with hanging vines on my ring finger as an accent nail. It brings more components from his swamp into the composition and also adds character along with that fairy tale-esque theme I was going for. One thing I wish I'd done differently is to either make the yellow dot a little smaller or bring the pink gradient out further because right now you can't even see the pink and it just looks like Oh, beautiful water gradient, delightful lily pads, and oh, such a wonderful sunny side up egg. <laughs> On my thumb, I'm going to attempt to paint this little cutie that I'll probably regret very soon. After mixing this mucus green, I made an outline of his body and filled it in with my fine tip brush. After curing it, I went in with a darker green and started filling in the shadows. Then I thought he needed more shadows, so I mixed a dark green, almost black, and and it looks good at first but this is where everything starts falling apart i'm gonna fast forward the rest because it looks atrocious and i redo it anyway so here is the first attempt and then now i'll do attempt number two so i just filed off the top layer and then i went in and did it again but this time went really light on the shadows I also don't have the abilities to paint something this tiny, so instead I'll give him some cute button eyes, some rosy cheeks, and make kawaii shrek. And ta-da! This is, <laughs> this is what it looks like all finished. Let me show you guys how the nails look in better lighting. Let me know what you think about this set in the comments below. If you liked kawaii shrek, or if I should have just did the lily pad design on my thumb as well. I'm also open to suggestions on what kind of nails you want to see me do next. As usual, thank you guys so much for watching. If you learned something or enjoyed today's video, please give it a like and remember to subscribe. Thank you. Bye.